Hello, Sarah Loving here. Today I wanted to film a makeup using entirely drugstore products. This is odd for me. Usually I've got a mixture of high-end and lower-end products in every makeup that I do. So this was a bit of a challenge. Um, I also just recently went to the drugstore and purchased a whole bunch of products. Well, not a whole bunch. You know, like under a dozen. So it's kind of a more dramatic evening look. I do have some individual lashes on and um, yeah, stay tuned if you want to see how I did it. I couldn't do a talk through video for this because they are doing construction outside of my house all during the day and it was ridiculously loud. I hope you guys enjoy. Come back again for something new. Bye bye. So I'm using the Rimmel Wake Me Up Foundation in Ivory with my Real Techniques buffing brush. And I like the coverage of this foundation for an evening look because it's about a medium to full coverage. And it's got a nice sort of satin finish. It smells good too, which is important for foundation, I think, because it's so close to your nose. So you want it to smell nice because you're going to be sniffing it all day long. Really making sure to buff that into the hairline and all the way down the jaw and onto the I'm using the e.l.f. eyelid primer, which I'm not a huge fan of. I find that it still creases, but I need it for the Wet n Wild eyeshadows to get a little bit of pigment intensity out of them. And I'm trying to stay true to the whole drugstore dealio. So this is the Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. And I'm using that light champagne -y color with my V. Neil V's, V's favorite brush and just packing that on the inside corner of the lid. And then using a big fluffy brush to kind of buff it all in. Next, I'm going in with this sort of brownie green color. And I'm going to take that in the outside corner of the eye with a Stila number 16 brush. And the reason I chose this color is because it's got this brown kind of undertone with this green metallic shimmer through the top. I'm just going to buff that through with that same fluffy brush and just kind of soften it and try to blow it out a little bit into the crease area and towards the inside corner of my eye. I had to keep on going back and reapplying this outer green gold brown color though because every time I blended that green just blended away and I was left only with the brown which is kind of a disappointment because the green is what makes it interesting. So I just kept reapplying. This is my Annabelle Brown Smooth Liner and I'm taking it just to the outside corner of the eye. And then I'm going to take this little flat angle brush and just kind of soften it and smudge it until I get it to the shape that I like. And just making sure that it stays nice and soft. I also just used what's left on the brush to kind of tap into the lash line all the way across the eye just to get a little bit of intensity at those lashes without it actually looking like a liner. So then I took that darker color and the pencil brush and just kind of pulled it across that liner to soften, blend, and set. It's also going to intensify a little bit. And here I am putting more of that greeny brown color on just to get a little bit of intensity happening. Just cleaning up under the eye and fixing the shape a little bit with my foundation brush and moving to the underneath. I'm using a green color, I'll insert a photo here because I edited it out, from the same palette on a pencil brush underneath the eye, all the way underneath there. And then I'm going to take the same color I have on the top outer and put it on the lower outer and really smoke it out and kind of bring it down. Next, I'm going to take that light color that I used on the inner corner up top and bring it down below to that inner corner as well for a nice highlight. Taking my eyeliner at the outer one third of the eye and I'm just going to tap it right into where the lashes are there and then use my angled brush again to soften it and smudge it out. I'm also going to use the angled brush to just kind of tap into the lash line there all the way across. I'm using that same brown, brown liner all across the waterline on the lower and then I'm about to take it on the upper waterline as well. And I'm going to get real awkward with where do I put my hand and eyeball, oh wait a minute, where's the camera? If I look this way, 
and I still poked my eye. <laughs> After all that, I still poke myself every time. Using that same brown shadow I used on the upper liner to set the lower liner, and then I'm gonna go over the outer corner again with that greeny brown color, cause it just keeps fading away. A little clean up and shape. And now the best part, ta-da, the other eye is done. Using my Shuamura Lash Curler to get a nice bend at the root of the lash so that when I put my false individuals on, they'll sit nicely. And then a couple of good coats of my, oh, splooged on the inner corner, always, always, my Maybelline Falsies in Black Drama. I'm, I'm really enjoying this mascara, actually. I think it gives some really good length and volume, which is what you're looking for out of a mascara, right? Fixing up the eyebrows now. I like to use a sponge just to take out the extra foundation that built up in there, and then a spoolie to brush it through. Now this color I'm using is a Marcel brow pencil and blondine and I know it looks kind of light but the ends of my hair are quite light right now so I've got a lot of different dimensions going on with my hair color so I kind of want my eyebrows to reflect the same thing sometimes and I'm trying to stay in the drugstore so that's why I'm using this Marcel one but I'm also going to take a little bit of that brown Annabelle eyeliner and put some on the back of my hand then using that angled brush, I'm just going to tap it in strategic places throughout the brow as well to give a little extra definition and also to give the brow kind of more intensity and dimension like my hair, the dark brown and the light brown. And there's a little gray mix in there as well, but we won't talk about it. And the Maybelline Great Lash to set them all in place. Just like to brush that through and kind of play around until I get the shape I like. Using my NYX HD Concealer in number 6 Medium and A Real Techniques Domed Shadow Brush, I believe that one is. And I'm a big fan of this concealer. It's a little heavy for day, I find, but for when I'm doing a full-on evening look, it's got really good coverage, especially for a drugstore concealer, which I usually find to be quite sheer which is not something I look for in an under eye concealer. It's nice and creamy too. All right, so a little bit of my Maybelline Dream Lumi highlighting concealer and my beauty blender just to get that little lift through the center of the face. Taking a little bit on the brow bone as well just to kind of get a highlight in there. And then going back in and blending just to make sure my concealer didn't make any weird lines with my eyeshadow. Highlighting down the center of the nose and the upper lip and the chin as well. Just the points I want to stand out or get rid of like the little frown lines there. Wasn't too happy when they showed up. And the other side, of course. Sometimes I don't always show the other side, but this one I guess I found important enough to display. Who knows why. So this is an NYC translucent loose powder that I'm just setting my foundation and concealer with a Hakuhodu brush. This isn't a very finely milled powder so it isn't one that I would use on a regular basis. I'm using it today because it is the drugstore makeup tutorial, right? So I couldn't find my Rimmel Stay Matte powder which would be my first choice for this look. So that's why that one was used. Right there I just flashed the Milani Blaked Baked Blush in Luminoso and just a generic blush brush and I'm taking that the apples of the cheek and working towards the hairline. This blush has such a nice sheen to it I don't even need to use a highlight afterwards. And my biggest regret in this makeup using the e.l.f. contouring palette I guess it is it is so strong on me somebody with a darker skin tone or me in the summer this would work a lot better but right now it is so intense on me I blended for ages you're even gonna see me try to remove some with the beauty blender and it still ended up going so strong 
But anyways, the placement is under the cheekbone into the forehead and then I usually like to take it under the jaw and chin as well just to kind of sharpen those lines. Bringing a little bit in the hollow of my chin just to help my lips look a little poutier. And then I'm squishing that angled brush I was using so that it gets nice and skinny so I can get a little contouring on the sides and under my nose. Just a smidge though, not a whole bunch. There's hardly anything left on the brush. Also going to take a smidge, apparently, of that contour color that I used through the crease of my eye just to kind of transition and also bring a little harmony to the rest of the makeup. The lip liner is Boots number no. 7 in Nude, and this is absolutely my most used lip liner right now. It's a great nude because it's not too pink, but it's not too brown, and it's very, very smooth and soft as well, which I hate dried, like hard lip liners. They hurt to put on and they don't blend. This one's a lovely formulation. The lipstick I'm going to use is the Revlon Color Burst in Creme Brulee. It's a very sheer nude color. A nice base for this look because then I'm going to add a little bit of L'Oreal Color Riche Le Gloss in Baby Blossom. I really like the texture of this lip gloss. It's not too sticky, which is hard to find in a drugstore gloss. So here we are about to put our lashes on and I'm going to use the Ardell Individuals in Short Black Flare. I've kept the lash application on normal speed because most people have questions about how to apply individual false lashes and I thought maybe you would like to see it in a little bit more realistic speed. I still cut out the time I was waiting in between for the glue to dry, but that's an important step. Wait at least 15 to 30 seconds for your glue to dry. And I'm using Duo Latex Glue for this, which is designed to attach to the skin. So you want to make sure that you're sliding that individual right on top of your natural lashes, attaching to the skin where the roots of your natural lashes are. Kind of like it's growing out all on its own. Also making sure that the angle is just right. If it's all crazy and sideways when your eye is closed or looking down, it's going to look even worse once your eye is open. So just turn them, tweak them, shift them until you got them just the way you want. I then also take my angled brush again and that dark shadow just to tap over where the lashes are to blend in any shiny lash glue. And then a little bit of mascara to make them kind of cohesive and stuck together. I'm a big advocate of blending lashes with mascara. And you don't reuse individuals anyways, so don't be worrying about that. Here we are, finished look. Hope you enjoyed.